everyone! Today we are going to be working with a little bit of clay or model magic or play-doh, whatever you have around. Um, and I hope you saw I had posted last week to try to get some play-doh or model magic, but if you don't have any, don't panic because I've also included a recipe for homemade play-doh if you want to go ahead and make some. So I have some model magic here and I'm going to make a snake with it. So I'm going to roll it like this. And hopefully you're all very familiar with that technique. When you work with Play-Doh, it's kind of the first thing you often think of making is a little worm or a snake. So it's just a matter of rolling it and rolling it. Hopefully you have a nice surface. You want to make for this um, a relatively long, thin snake. You don't want to make him so thin that he falls apart. And to have a little fun today, I'm going to read you a poem from one of my favorite poem, poem books when I was little. It's called Something Big Has Been Here by Jack Perletsky. And it's a collection of, of silly poems that can um, make you laugh. So... This one is entitled, My Snake, and hopefully I will be able to do all of these. And this will help you learn how to keep your, your snakes together when you make them. My Snake by Jack Prolesky. My snake, a long and limber pet, is practicing the alphabet. He demonstrates immense finesse in shaping a curvaceous S. He follows his initial show by closing up into an O, then fabricates an F, which is a little more complicated, but there's an F, an F and G with enviable artistry. My snake with neither pad nor pen delineates a splendid N. Oops, let's see if I can make mine more splendid. An agile H. Mm. <laughs> That's a tough one. There we go. An agile H, a supple L. Here comes a very difficult one. An X with little parallel. So let's see. There we go. A shapely J. Thank goodness that's easier. A graceful A. A seamless C. A clever K. That clay, it, K is very clever. Let's see if I'll put this down like this. There's my, my K. Then pausing for a breath or two, huh, he turns himself into a U. There he is. My snake with every skillful twist appends a letter to his list. He makes an E. He forms an M. A Y and a B come after them. He diagrams a dexterous D. <coughs> A subtle T, a nimble Z, a convoluted, convoluted curly Q, a virtuoso W. And you might have moments where your snake tries to fall apart. You can try to put him back together there. My snake performing like a star portrays a P, enacts an R, contorts into a brilliant B with stylish sinuosity. And yet though he may stretch and shake, one single point eludes my snake, 
despite his most ingenious try, he simply cannot dot his eye. So um, that's a, a fun poem I wanted to share with you today. But snakes are actually a really important building block to making pots and other things out of ceramic um, ceramics. So um, what you would do is you curl your snake up like this. You can break off a little part of them. And this is what's called a ceramic coil. Well, this isn't ceramic, I'm using model magic. But if we were using real clay, we could make a pot out of, out of these. So I'm gonna make this my base and I might start pressing this together a little bit because I wanna have a solid base to my coil pot. And then I might need to make some of these thinner. So I might do this here. And then you can coil it. You can even make like all different kind of interesting designs. And I'm starting to make some edges to my little hole. And in your lesson, I'll put some different images of um, coil pots. Um, they can be quite beautiful and get quite complicated. So I'm gonna curl this up again and put it here. So see if you can make a coil pot and see if you can also make the snake spell out the alphabet. And it's good practice for maybe next year we could do some pottery at REA together. So there's my little pot. And a ceramic artist might leave that that way, or they might push these together to make walls. Hope you enjoy working with some Play-Doh today, or clay, or